Welcome to the Natural History Museum's Herpetology Collection. I'm Jeff Stryker, Senior Curator in Charge of Herpetology here at the Natural History Museum. Behind me is one of the oldest and largest collections of alcohol-preserved amphibians and reptiles in the world. It's housed here in the climate-controlled Darwin Center One. The collection is used by scientists from all over the world to study biodiversity, ecosystems function, and species response to environmental change. The collection is filled with fascinating natural histories, and I'll share just a few of those with you today. The way that evolution has shaped the diversity of life is incredible, particularly when it comes to how different species reproduce. Here in the Natural History Museum's reptile collection, we have many specimens that represent all female species. How is that possible, you might ask? Well, they've evolved to clone themselves via a process called parthenogenesis. We're still learning about different species of parthenogenetic lizard, but we know that many of them arise from the hybridization of two sexually reproducing species. For example, the New Mexico whiptail lizard, Aspidocillus neomexicana, is an all-female species that originated from the hybridization of the tiger whiptail and the little striped whiptail. Unlike its parent species, the New Mexico whiptail doesn't need to fertilize its eggs, but sexual behaviors are still an important part of its reproductive cycle. Several studies have shown that New Mexico whiptail lizards that engage in sexual behaviors similar to copulation are more likely to ovulate than those that don't. This suggests that sexual behavior is still important even in all female asexual species. In fact, all female lizard species have evolved many times and in many different parts of our planet, including geckos in Australia, the Pacific Islands, and these amazing rainbow lizards from Southeast Asia. These are just a few of the incredible examples of diversity that our collection represents. <music> 